Well, if we're saying that this speech was about the fact that a lot of people don't like politicians, which is true, and then you're saying, actually, he's already lied to us by saying that he wants to abolish the House of Lords. This is the headlines that's all over the media. But he's not actually saying that. Then surely he's undermining his own position because it very much was a drain the swamp kind of speech. We've got to get rid of corruption. We've got to slim down the House of Lords. We've got to, you know, put all the power in the hands of the local people. He said, why would somebody in Westminster know what somebody in West Yorkshire needs? He's got, he's kind of got a point, hasn't he? Well, well, he has, but if it's corruption you want to get rid of in politics, I'm afraid you're not going to get rid of that by making even more layers of political uh, mm. office. So at the moment, you know, we have 650 MPs in, in Westminster. I lose track of how many peers we have in the House of Lords. We have umpteen local councillors, far too many. You have regional governments, you have devolved governments. Oh, OK, let's just spend a several hundred million more of taxpayers' money bringing in yet another layer of government that's going to be expensive, that's going to require staffing, that's going to require offices. At the end of the day, what this is going to mean, Beverly, is less money for local people people. Um, and, and, and I think there's also, you know, some, some of the things that are going to happen are going to be quite worrying. We've seen, for instance, Oxfordshire is bringing in climate lockdowns now. The idea that you can't travel beyond your set district in your car for more than a few times a, a year. Um, we're going to have councils, I'm afraid, jumped up, drunk on power, making all kinds of crazy room, r rules. <laughs> um, our freedom is going to be less and we're going to be fleeced for more money to have less freedom. That's my worry. Honestly, if there's a phrase that makes my blood run cold, Suzanne Evans, it's the idea of local bureaucrats drunk on power. I think you've put the nail in the coffin of this speech. <laughs> well, I'm convincingly. Afraid, I'm afraid I used to be a councillor, so I, I have come across that, I'm afraid, <laughs> Beverly. And I think, and you I were one. You were one. But you see, what about, what about the idea that he said a, a ban on... <laughs> no, you would never have been. But a ban on the foreign funding of politics in this country, a ban on MPs' second jobs. These are big changes, Sue, aren't they? Well, again, yes and no. Uh, you know, he's talking about ending the undue influence of wealth and foreign money in politics. Well, let's just look at that first one, influence of wealth. What about the influence of trade unions who have massive power and in many cases massive wealth as well? I don't see any Labour, leading, Labour leader rushing to um, get rid of the influence of the trade unions in politics. You let's, let's face it, pretty much vote uh, on, on block for whoever the next Labour leader is, is going to be. Um, and, and as far as banning second jobs, again, it's a great soundbite. But you could argue that MPs benefit from having a second job and being outside those ivory towers of Westminster for a short time, getting outside of that Westminster bubble. Um, and of course, there are some careers. So, for instance, just plucking one out of thin air, if you're a doctor, you need to carry on in medical practice in order to be uh, to, to maintain yeah. your accreditation and to be able to potentially practice again once uh, you may be booted out of of office. So I, again, I don't think it's a lovely soundbite. It sounds fantastic, but good soundbites make terrible policy.